Do your job. Get Allen in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I forgot. You got to put your sign out front for Kamala. Hit the like button. Let's do one thing that I do and I love the most. He's got to have some green on today. I heard him this morning. But he tiptoes around John a little bit, man. But he don't tiptoe around me. He kicks my ass when he comes on here. And you know what I mean? I think he fe- kind of what we do is we release the beast when he comes on the National Football Show. He is the co-host of Birds 365. Those guys do a fantastic job. Hit the like button for our friend, Big Z, Xander Krause. What's up, Big Cells? Yeah, hey. I'm sorry about my rant there a little bit, but I all, right, all good, man. I, I I think I don't think you're entirely wrong. I mean, I could care less what Paul's politics are, but uh, look, you heard Eric Allen talk about it yesterday. I thought he was Eric Allen was more blunt on that than I was expecting him to yeah. be, because uh, yeah. I think he knows that his stake or his future uh, potential at being a Hall of Fame player, which he is, is in Paul's hands. Yeah. Uh, and that that that's probably a really shitty feeling, especially when you were a professional that did everything right. You know, he said something yesterday, Sills, Eric, on that great interview you had. He's like, I was a corner my whole career. <laughs> I mean, that's true, man. And that was in a different era of cornerbacking. Not playing safety. like Not playing. Guys, I mean, I was so moved by that interview last night. I, mean, I was on. He is not playing 10 yards off the ball in zone. He was a yeah, man. He was corner. playing real corner. I ordered some books last night from. You know, old time football, gang green defense, eagle old old time Eagles books that I want to read because, you know, I I am the kind of guy that would love that type of defense. I would love that is my type of defense, and it's a shame that uh, we're so far off that uh, right now. But ultimately, I think that's where we are, and I don't think we're going well, back. I, but I can reminisce it with it through Eric Allen. I think your dad was working too hard trying to build a company up there, man. Because if he would have had you younger, yeah. man. You would have loved that era of football, dude. People knocking people up because right now, and he said it too, man. He thinks it's tougher to play corner today because look, yeah. you know, you got you can't touch the guys down the field. You've got to you can play that safety kind of cover corner kind of guy ten yards off the ball, Xander. I mean, hey, Quinion Mitchell, man, he's probably a better cover guy than Eric was because he has to be because there's more things he has to do, man. I right. mean, dude, I'm just telling you, I thought. Eric Allen was sensational yesterday, and he thanked us and said that if you want me to be a mainstay here on the program, folks, that's a testament to you, too. Please hit that like button. We're almost at 200 likes right now. Thank you guys a lot. The Super Chats have been fantastic. Xander and I have been very transparent with you. The first 10 minutes of the program is the most important. Make sure you get those likes in early tomorrow. So we appreciate Appreciate everybody, man. Jacob Nation has been showing out like crazy. Right now, so really dope to see big sales. Absolutely. All right. Um, what do you think of trades right now? Um, do you think Howie makes a move? Because I heard you say it with John today. You think he makes an A move, a B move, or a C move as he gets closer to the trading deadline? Dude, here's the thing, right? Everybody in the football world has a currency, right? When you're a coach, being a great coach, having a winning football team, having respect of your players. That's your currency. When you're A.J. Brown having yards and catches and touchdowns um, is your currency. When you're Jalen Hurts being talked about as an elite quarterback is your currency. When you're Howie Roseman, and particularly when you're the type of background that Howie Roseman is, those draft picks are his currency, and they're his moment to shine. Um, and, And I say that because I think even if there were a move out there that would be worth it, like you talk about a guy like and and. To be honest, I don't really want one of the middle guys. I don't think they're going to move the needle. You talk about like Zadarius Smith, got guys that are going to be a third, fourth round pick. What are they going to do? If you got guys like Miles Garrett, if you got guys like you know Max Crosby available, that's the move I want to make. And I don't see it happening because that's going to re- require Howie Roseman to give up his shine. And we can all sit here and agree. If we send a first round pick for Max Crosby or you send a first round pick for Miles Garrett, there ain't one person in that draft next year. I don't give a shit who it is. That will be more valuable to the Philadelphia Eagles in this Super Bowl window than one of those two players. There's not one out there. But the team won't think like that. And I don't I don't see them going that high and giving that much 
for a player of that caliber. I think that's what we need. Um, and to be honest, I'm done with the middling moves. I mean, look, Howie's, I'm not the biggest Howie hater in the world. He's failed at some of these midseason moves in recent years. You know, Robert Quinn, and I don't have a problem with him taking the shot, right? I mean, you, you know, you're a contender in 22. You take the shot for Robert Quinn. You think he might have something left for a fourth rounder. Good. That's fine. It didn't work, right? So I, I'm not really in the camp of I'd like to make a move like that. I'm in the camp of if you're going to make a splash and you believe the NFC is open and your team is competent enough to get there, because I do think the NFC is a lot more open than the AFC, make the move. Make the move for the dude that's going to change the game. Make the move for the dude that's going to make your defense go up three notches. Make the dude. Make the move for the dude that Vic Fangio is going to salivate at. Don't don't give me another rotational piece. And I don't think they're going to do that. So maybe they go the rotational piece route. We'll see what they end up doing. But my gut feeling on the big names, which everybody wants, is that I'd love them. I think it'd be a great addition to the team. I think that's what we need as an edge player. I don't see how we go in that high and given, you know, you're talking about a first round pick and more for those type of players. Probably. And you have to take into consideration when you're making midseason trades versus offseason trades, your market's bigger if you're Cleveland yeah, and you're the Raiders. You're going to be looking at desperation here. So, and if I you're think gonna, one of those one of those competitors is probably going to be Detroit, right? You lose yeah. Aiden Hutchinson, they probably feel like they have a really they are good talking chance. with Crosby. Yeah, I could see that. So you're right. I mean, look, you're right about that, but it's a lot, man. It's a lot to give up. I, I like I said, I would do it. I would give up a first and a second. But that's just me. I don't view draft picks the same way. I but, view draft picks as a way to improve your team. If I but, can send a dra two draft picks for a guy that's a bona fide edge rusher, but what the hell do I care? If you're right? the Lions, but, if you're the Lions, you give a one and a two away for Max Crosby. Yeah. So when that kick comes back next year, Aiden Hutchinson, your two ends are Max Crosby and Aiden Hutchinson. Oh my God. Dude, that we Dude, you're gonna run the, you're gonna run the NFL. Oh my gosh. If if the Lions have those two dudes. That's See, you got to be looking you know. down the road, like you said. Yeah. A lot of people are going to be looking in the micro right now, and you got to—that's a micro macro move that helps you today and it helps you the next three years. That's why, if you're the Lions, dude, Brad Holmes has landed on every freaking draft pick that he's had since he's been the general manager. And if they land Crosby, look at what they have. They got the kid Campbell at linebacker. Their interior guys are good. They got the kid Branch in the secondary. They just went out and got. The kid Arnold from Alabama as well. Look how freaking young they are. There's nobody in their 30s on that team, dude. I know. That yeah, I mean, you're talking – how old is Max move. Crosby? Do you know? Do you know how what? old Max Crosby is? I think he's 27. And Miles Garrett's, what, 28? About to turn 29, I think. Yeah, but I don't well, believe – Those are dudes. I, I don't think people would like what I'd be willing to send to get Miles Garrett in Philly. Well, you'd have to do two ones to get him. I would do whatever they asked for. That's what I, that if I'm the GM of a team, I'm not holding on to fuddy duddy assets, which it's, it's like crypto which I he mean, misses boom on or bust, right? Like every yeah. draft pick is boom or bust. Why would I wait when my window is now and I can get a 28 year old mod? He is the best defensive player in the NFL. I'd be I, the would, best I would send, I would send two ones and a, and a two or a three. He'd be the best defensive player the Eagles have had since Reggie White. Yeah, I mean, you would as a lineman, as him. a lineman, as a lineman. Yeah, it makes makes a lot of sense. So I look, I would do it, but you know, to answer, I don't think they're going to. Boy, would that be nice though? I mean, Sills, that would change the outlook of the season a little uh, bit, man. If you yeah. get a defensive guy, a, a guy like that, that's a game wrecker. That also is going to make life easier for your for your secondary, make life easier for your linebackers. And it's going to make life easier for the offense because that defense is going to be clamping teams. So what you're saying then is you think Howie needs to make an A move, but not a B move, not a C move. You think he has to make an A move to be a true contender, especially in a very weak NFC. Well, I think when you look at the it, when you look at the breakdown of our team right now, an A move makes the most sense because the positions that we need to improve, which Really, are linebacker and and this and the edge rushers. That's how. That's what I think. I mean, I think you're good at corner. I think you're good at safety with CJ and Reed, and you also have you know 
Cooper that can move around. Maybe you have Avante. Like, I think you're back. okay. Sidney Brown coming back. I think you're okay at those spots. You know, they're getting better and they're young, but I think they're okay. Linebacker, you have, you know, essentially trash cans. Zach Bond didn't, it doesn't look like he's at practice today. Uh, he had a shoulder injury from last week, so we'll see if he plays. It's linebacker and it's edge. And and still, you're not getting a, gate, a great edge. That's not an A move. No. And a B move doesn't move the needle for me. No, I think there's A and then there's C. And well, D. here, here. What does another Bryce Huff do for this team? Nothing. And what's the tier above Bryce Huff? That would be an A move. That would move the needle. It'd be like so that kid Smith from Cleveland. What's that? It'd be like the Smith move from Cleveland. It wouldn't really add anything to the right. team. It would just be another rotational piece because – as far as I'm, I think he's a good player. Uh, Smith in Cle I, Cleveland's got good edge rushers, dude. They do. They have good edge rushers. Yeah, I mean, look, I like how old Cedarius Smith though. I mean, the dude's been around for how long? He was a beast when he back in his, his Green Bay days. I remember that. Absolutely, I think I mean, he's maybe got he's not. 30. He's thirty two. Yeah. Well, which would mean to me that it's one of the reasons why they want to move off that contract. Um, Cleveland would have to eat some of that contract, and you could probably pick him up for a fifth rounder. You wouldn't pick up Smith for a fifth round draft choice for depth on yeah, your. Yeah, I mean, look, I wouldn't criticize that. I wouldn't criticize that. I wouldn't either. My 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 gripe with with it. Well, you know, maybe I w I wouldn't criticize that. If you got Zadarius Smith for a fifth rounder, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Do I think it moved the needle? No, I don't think it moved the needle. And it's not a knock on the player. It's more of the way the team is set up right but now. But it's also so a subtle knock on Huff. It's not quite the hand. See here. It's not quite the hammer that Howie would have to face if you gave up only a five. To you got to remember, yeah, but we already have a like bunch him. of Darius Smith. That's the wait problem. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, though. You've got to improve your edge rushing. And look, man, the Browns and the Giant games. I want people to look at that as basically pyrite. Hang in there. It's fool's gold a little bit. Now you've got a top flight offense that you have to go against, and you're going to have to get to this guy. By the way, Orlando Brown, you know, he's got a little nick and he's got an injury here, but he's played great for them. They've improved that old line. If you don't get to Burrow and all of a sudden the la the thing that Nick was blowing today was the, the pass rush the last two weeks against inferior competition in the old line. I get it's on your schedule. I get it. But don't sit around and rip the Cincinnati schedule when the last two weeks you've played no one too. Your most quality win is Green Bay. You don't have a win on there where you can tote around like you say Kansas City does. Kansas City's beaten San Francisco. They've beaten the Ravens. They've yeah, beaten I mean, so look, I'm all right with that because honestly, Sills, I, I don't want to fall into the trap of early year beating. Like, that's why I was happy with last week's win. I know you beat the Giants, but what I saw last week was something you can add to your game so that by the time you get to December, you can be playing better football. Are they going to become a run team? No, they're not. I get that. But did you just show that you have another tool in your arsenal that when you go up against the best teams in the league, you have that in your in your in your toolbox? They did. Can they keep building on that? Yes. So I'm not really going to get caught up in the semantics of who you beat early in the year. Last year we beat the Chiefs and the Bills early in the year. Who the fuck won the Super Bowl, right? It didn't matter. It doesn't matter. So just keep stacking and 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 Put yourself in a better position each week to be a great football team when it matters most. Will they do that? I don't know, man. I don't know. How concerned are you about – here, let's do this. We agree the Bengal offense is better than the Eagle defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, that Bengal offense is scary because of one guy. Well, two guys, but one guy, I mean, Well, they Joe are Burrow. top eight. Yeah, well, they have Joe Burrow. I mean, Joe Burrow is is an elite, elite quarterback. He is top of the top when you talk about quarterbacks in the NFL. And he's having a premier season. And he's having a tremendous – I think he's third in the league in passer rating. I mean, he's got, what, 12 touchdowns, two picks, something in that range. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let me look yeah. up because I want to be accurate for everybody. But I do know Joe Burrow is – right now, I mean, he's, he's tearing it up. He's got 14 touchdowns to two interceptions with a 110 rating. Uh, and by the way, that's with a not-so-great offensive line, which has slightly improved this year. Yep. Slightly improved this year, but not great. I mean, you're not talking about an eagle offensive line. Don't no. don't give me that. They were slightly improved. Um, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions, 110 rating. The dude is lights out. And then you have Jamar Chase, who you know I don't know where you ranked Jamar Chase. Johnny Mack said he he has him above AJ Brown. Um, Absolutely not. He's that's fucking crazy. 
I don't know. Really, I mean, look, a jump John wasn't saying made. production. John's saying from a talent perspective, I, I take Jamar Chase. I, I told him I have AJ slightly above, but you could make the argument, Sills, when you watch Jamar Chase play football, he's in that tier. I mean, he's certainly in that tier. So you think Jamar Chase and a guy like Tyree Kill are better than AJ Brown and DK Metcalf, especially in the style of football that those two organizations play? They well, like when, it, when you they factor like in Metcalf. style of play, Jamar is a much better fit for Burrow. And AJ is a much better fit for Hertz because Hertz needs that wider catch radius and the big body player, you know, where you kind of give him a 50 50 ball more often. Preference. Yeah, right. So, but look, here's what John said. And just to be, you know, transparent about what John said John has three elite receivers in the league. He's got Tyreek, got Justin Jefferson, he's got Jamar Chase. It's those three, and then it's everybody else. AJ right there is top five, he said, right after those guys. But those three are in a category of their own. A little hard for me to push back inside. I think that's pretty sound, honestly. I mean, I, I I like AJ, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I think AJ's right there. I really do. It's it, Jefferson. It's Jefferson, in my opinion, and everyone else. You can you can rank them any way you want. What if you like apple pie or cherry pie? Um, after that, yeah, right. Look, this is this is this is the reality. Flexing's right right here. Can't go wrong with none of them. <laughs> right. That's the truth. You're, got, you're well, getting an A+. You want Tyree Kill? I'll take Jamar Chase. I think yeah, we're all right. good. Right? Exactly. You However, are. I don't think anybody would pass on Jefferson except for Howie. <laughs> There's only one man on planet Earth that does Only one on man on planet Earth that would pass on Howie or on uh, Justin Jefferson. Oh, look, I, I, I think, by the way, I think you overrate DK. Like, I think DK is great. I don't think he's in AJ's league. I think he helps Gino re resurrect his career. That guy was on DK, seven. I think DK teams. is great. I don't think DK lives up to his potential of what he Dude, should be. He's got Geno Smith throwing him the ball. Let's not forget he's been on eight teams. Geno's a decent. Yeah, I mean Geno's a decent thrower. He was of the a football. dream man before he got there. Now he makes thirty million. You know why? Because of one guy. Where I mean, was yeah, he DK's before? Had, DK's had thirteen hundred. That's his. That's his most ever. Was his second year in the league. Thirteen hundred yards last yeah, year. Wilson, then. Last year, eleven hundred to twenty. I don't want to go completely off stats because I mean AJ's got better stats than Jamar, so I'm not going to go entirely off stats. I just think AJ's the better player than DK. I would take AJ over DK. He's my preference because, except for his dumb shit outside, but he's my preference because we throw the football up, dog. It's impossible to get that ball out of his hands, man. I yeah. mean, he oh, is a true. force. And no big, yeah, he is that, a beast, yak, that's true. that yak shit that he has, yeah. dude, he's fucking tremendous, man. I mean, okay, so are you believing now in your defense then since I'm hearing some really good stuff coming out? I of mean, here? I'm not I'm not like fully sold, right? I mean, you beat up on the Giants and the on, on the and the Browns. They're they're not two good teams, but do I think there's some positive things emerging from this defense that you can build on? A hundred percent. Does it look like Vic Fangio is playing to his personnel better in week seven than he did in week one? A hundred percent. Maybe he found something with N'Kobe Dean. The guy sucks in space. We know that. But he's a little downhill player. You can get him downhill a little bit. Maybe you can use him that way. He Maybe can you can hide him. Him. Right, hide him as a linebacker or in space by using him in different ways. I think Vic has found himself a little. I think this is going to be a huge week, right? Because it's one thing to find yourself when you're playing inept quarterbacks. It's another thing to find yourself when you're playing Joe Burrow. Oh, yeah. You shut him you know? down. There's a lot of positives. Exactly. Now you're talking. Now, look, I don't expect to shut down Joe Burrow. Nobody shuts down Joe Burrow. All right. I, I don't expect to do that, and I'm not expecting the defense to do that. Can they show signs of improving and building on what they've done so far versus a more prolific passer and a more prolific offense? That's going to be the tale this weekend. If you see that this weekend, I think you really got something. Remember, Sills, this offseason. You told me, and I think you were right about this, and I think even a couple people in the chat have said this, 2025 looks great for this defense, right? So if you can kind of speed that process up a little bit, you and know. maybe the offense. Well, that too. But I'm talking mainly about the yeah. defense right now. Yeah. That defense is yeah. going to be good next yeah. year. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, you got these yeah. young guys getting better. Yeah. If you can kind of yeah. speed that up, if you can yeah. keep building on what they've done early in the year right now. I mean, yeah. you gave me the rankings for the defense. I think yeah. they're above what most of us would have expected at this point in the year. Uh, Yes. Right. I mean, they're yep. doing solid. They're playing yep. solid football. Yep. Um, and they're playing. I think there's the a lot to build on there. I think and there's a lot to build the schedule. on. schedule. They're doing. Hey, by the way, the reason, and tell me if I'm wrong, I don't want to speak for you here. One of the things that I think the reason why you're seeing and feeling better about the defense is because the younger players are the ones that are showing up and getting better. Because again, 
We're not talking about vet guys like 22. These right. are younger players that don't have – I mean, dude, Nicobe Dean came into this year with 218 total snaps as an NFL player. That's basically chicken shit, and he was a sporadic player at best. Quinion's never played. These are the first six games of his career. Cooper DeGene just got on the field, and he's showing some stuff. Now, again, the disappointment is Huff because he's a six-year veteran. Nolan Smith is starting to show something, okay? And he maybe he is a BG type of guy where he's a slow crawl and he's getting better the more he feels it. I mean, Vic's talking higher about him than he's ever. He never talks highly about Bryce Huff because I think he's disappointed with him. He's also talking about those younger tackles, Booker and Ojimo. He's talking about those two guys mm -hmm. as they're getting better and getting more rotational pieces. Even Milton Williams, you know, the one guy he's not talking about, he never brings up Jordan Davis's name no, unless asked. You know why? Remember this, Xander, if a coach doesn't ever bring your name up, you're fucking in trouble. I know. If the other he guy is Bryce Hoff. You, I mean, he didn't mention Bryce Hoff. He was nope. asked specifically about those two guys yesterday. He singled out Nolan Smith. Yep. Talked about Nolan in great length, about talked how he's improving, three-down player, talked about yep. Quinion. I mean, Josh. the only thing he said about Bryce Hoff is, oh, he's you know, showing some signs or whatever yeah. he said. I mean, you know, it's clear that the dudes that, that – um that Vic doesn't like, but I don't know. I mean, look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, con, you know, contrasting opinions about Jordan Davis with, he's a nose and he's not going to play a lot. And they were, uh, the John Giants were trying to, John thinks he's a good nose tackle. He thinks he's under misunderstood. And he knew this was going to happen because you took a guy with a 13th overall pick. So he's like, he played 12 snaps. Overdrafted. Yes. Um, that's what John thinks, but he doesn't think he's a bad player because he's not. I mean, he's not a bad nose tackle. No. But when you have a 13th pick and you got to sit him on the bench for most of a game because the team wants to pass, whether we like it or not, it's an indictment on the limitations of the player, right? I mean, he took him with the 13th overall pick and he played 12 snaps. John will say, okay, the context is they were in passing downs all day. Okay, that's fine. It just does highlight what Jordan Davis's deficiencies are and that they're too good to too much to take him with the 13th overall pick. So. You know, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him. When you have guys like a Jomo, who's, I believe, a seventh rounder. I think a Jomo was a seventh rounder, if I'm not Who had mistaken. more reps last game because Davis only had 12. And, and by the way, he's been productive. Yeah, he's been, hey, he's been very productive. And that's why, one thing I like about Clint yeah, 249 Hurst, pick, my friend, more hey, Jomo. How about this? You know what I love about him? I love what I love about him and you know, what I love about Vic Fangio. Vic's not playing to your draft place. He's going to play the guys who produce, and that's what Clint Hurt's doing too. Because get this, Xander, I don't care what, what Howie Roseman or Nick Sirianni say when they go, that just worked out in the rotation. Let me tell you something. Agents will call Howie and go, what the fuck are you doing with my playing incentive guy? Because he's got a deal in his contract, Jordan Davis. I'm sure that 75% of the plays that he plays, he gets a bonus of four or $500,000. You're playing my guy who was the 13th pick, 12 snaps. Wait, even as a rookie, you have that? Oh, you have all those You have all those things, roster bonuses. I didn't know as a rookie. Oh, you have all that in there based in your contract. Absolutely. Like, look, if you get 10 sacks, you probably get a million bucks. If you're the rookie of the year, you get another million bucks. Dexter Lawrence, boy, he getting a couple mil. That dude racking up sacks at the nose. Hey, where did he play ball? Huh? Where did he play ball? Dexter? I, was he Tennessee? Was he a Clemson guy? Ah, he might have been. I thought he was Clemson. Yeah, good, good call. Clemson. Yeah, yep. He's a Clemson good guy. Call. God dang. Yeah, I knew I knew it was orange. I knew it was something orange. <laughs> I said Tennessee. Hey, he's a Clemson. Man, I'll tell you what, man. That guy's the best in terror. Him and that guy in Tennessee are awful good there. All right. Do you believe they're going to run the ball more in this game where Cincinnati's run defense is suspect at best? Or do you think they're going to throw the ball? Because how about this one? You got Joe Burrow on the other side. Bro, you can't get into a, a shootout with that guy. I, I wouldn't want to. Not that, with yeah. that noodle arm. You're well, not you know, getting this, this, that is a, this, is a, this is a much more interesting conversation than I think people realize for this game specifically because it's not all about – Oh, do we want to become a run know. identity team? They're right. I mean, you're, you want to keep Joe Burrow off the field, so that's why running is a, is a positive. Remember, you have Fred Johnson in for Mylotta, who 
the best way to mitigate a pass rush is to run against it. And they have Trey Hendrickson, who's an elite pass rusher. You know, how do you take him out of the game going up against Fred Johnson? You probably run the ball at him, right? I mean, like you do against the Eagles pass rush. That's how you get rid of him. Uh, so there's a l- couple interesting things here about, you know, maybe they do have a run approach. I think they'll, I have a feeling they're going to come out and try and establish it, but they're going to be too panicky, right? Like if, if, if Joe Burrow gets one touchdown, they're going to abandon the run like they always do. But I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I, I hope they build on it because I think this team needs to be more balanced. And and Detroit proves it every week. Just because you're down to an opponent doesn't mean you need to abandon the run. Like, why is that a philosophy? I don't get why that's a line of thinking in the NFL. You know Detroit what was down 10 right last week. Detroit was down 10 last week. They had a balanced attack all throughout the game. They marched back. They set up the play action for their quarterback. They got some stops on defense, and they came back and won the football game. I mean, don't abandon the run. Now, if you're down 28 nothing, okay, yeah, no crap. You're going to have to throw the ball. But seven points, 14 points, I mean, come on. You're still in the football game, especially when it's early in the first half. So I hope they stick to it. I'm not sure if they will. Uh, we shall see, Big Sills. Well, we'll see, too. If one thing's for sure, if my boy Jordan Davis can stay out of DQ with them blizzards, just make sure you stay out of there with no them blizzards. On that. <laughs> hey, I'm going to ask you one more time on this because I had to look it up. What do you make of the Bengals being favored by two and a half? I think that's probably about right. I mean, look, they're three and four team, but you have Joe Burrow, you have Jamar Chase. You got a good team over there. Uh, they're at home. The Eagles haven't particularly beat a great football team at all. Uh, the quarterback has not shown that he is playing at an elite level right now. The offense, I think, has underperformed for what the expectation was. You know, when you talk about a $200 million, $175 million offense, I think that's probably the right line. I mean, you know, what is it, Bengals minus two and a half right now? Yeah, it's, it sounds about right to me, honestly. I mean, I'm not a gambling man, so take it with a grain of salt. I don't gamble, but um, sounds about right. We'll read all of our Super Chats here in a second here because we have Marcus Hayes at the top of the hour from um, the Philadelphia Inquirer. I got to throw this at you, man. So big move was made today. DeAndre Hopkins now is a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. And I said this last week to people. Amari Cooper is going to have more of an impact on the Bills than than what Devontae Adams is with the Jets. And people go, wait a minute. Seals, Devontae Adams is a bad player. I said, that's not what I'm asking you or telling you. Right. I'm telling you that there's going to be a guy who is going to be play- – Aaron Rodgers is not playing elite football right now. No, he's not. No. Josh Allen is, okay? And when you got a guy in Kansas City that's throwing to tra- trash, trash cans and uh, vomit bags, and now you add a guy who's fifth in almost every – do you know you could probably make the argument in the last 10 years that him and Mike Evans are the two best wide receivers in pro football. And think about who Hopkins has had throw the ball to him. T.J. Yates, okay? He's had those bums in Arizona, and now he's had Will Levis. Yeah, brutal. Dude, he's one of the best three-down, third-down wide receivers I've ever seen. Do you know the impact that he's going to have on that freaking team in Kansas City? And with the rest, like a guy like Xavier Worthy, dude. Dude, You know what the best thing for him is? He went to – I know it's great to go to Mahomes, and I appreciate that. It's great to go to Andy, man. Andy is Andy is going to know exactly what to do. Now, look, I will say this about DeAndre Hopkins. Definitely on the other side of his prime, right? 100%. Yeah, that's obvious. But, boy, you go to Andy and Patrick. If there's anybody that's going to get him as close to that prime form, it's those two guys, uh, and I can see it happening in a big way for he them. He doesn't have to be prime hop. No, he doesn't. You, you see that. They're 6-0 with, with with trash bags, as you pointed out. I mean, they're in a good spot with him. So I think it's a good trade. Um, you know, I still have a weird uh, thing inside of me where I just love Andy Reid. So, like, I kind of, you know, I weirdly root for the Chiefs in a way when we're not playing when they're not playing the Eagles. They're an AFC team. They're not really a threat to us till the Super Bowl. If they're not playing the Birds, I root for Andy. I like Andy. Uh, I think our organization failed him in a way. I know he didn't get us over the top, but I don't think it was all on Andy Reid, and I think there was a maturation process there. But yeah, 14 years, I got yeah, it. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good, man. That, that Kansas City team is scary. Uh, and by the way, they're now a defensive football team. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, you never thought you'd say that with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid at the helm. They're a defensive football team. Do you agree what I said, though? Front offices, general managers, and owners don't win Super Bowls. Coaches and players do. Yes, they do. I and mean, that's look. the fundamental problem you have in Philly. And well, you said it earlier. I mean, look, I, you know, I think it was Kim who asked you about doing the top 10 organizations. You're right. Eagles are a top 10 organization. They're they a great are. winning organization. Yep. They're not a great championship organization. That's right. And and I think that's the best way to put it right now. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's the reason that, you know, everybody's like, oh, Sills is so such a hater. I'm like, Sills comes from a cloth of championships, not winning. Championships are bust. So yeah. when Sills calls out problems, that's what the, that's the lens he views it through. Most people don't view it through that, so I get why. Why, why, why play it? I mean, hey, look, I got that you're around the rim every year, and I think that's cool. Hey, wait a minute, congratulations, you're not the Jets. Is that what you want me to say? I mean, how, how much victory laps can you do not being the Jets? Yeah. I hey, agree. we're gonna get Marcus Hayes on, so let's do these super chats here. Yeah, real quick, let me roll through them. Uh, C. Figgis checks in. Hey, fellas, what if Jalen just needs more time? Look at how Sam Darnold, Geno Smith, and Baker Mayfield Great just take. started playing decent football. Outside of Patrick, Lamar, and Allen, all QBs oh. overrated. I think he meant are over dollars. Say, man, it's a great point. And look, and it's something we've talked Ryan about. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan the problem Tannehill. With it, I, th yeah. I think the problem with it is with Jalen is C. Figgis is I don't know how long his window is going to be open when you when you rely on your legs so much as an athlete. Right. And by the way, he got paid. You know, Baker never got paid from the Browns. You know, Gino was let go early. Sam Darnold never got that contract. Jalen's locked in. So our window to win is now. I think it's a good point. I think if people give Jalen enough time at 28, 29 years old, I think he could be a really good quarterback. I really do. I don't think he has a skill set, but let's move on. Good stuff there, C. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Abe says, wouldn't wouldn't have this issue if we just re-sign Reddick and not sign White, CJ Gardner, Johnson, Huff, and cutting Bradbury. Penny pinching Howie. You know, Abe, I appreciate the point. I don't even think it's as much penny pinching as it is, I think, just wrong decisions. Philosophical, yeah, philosophical um, miss. Just bad, yeah, just bad decisions. There's some bad, bad decisions. decisions in there. Um, Absolutely. And that's what I have the issue with, for sure. Yep. Go ahead, uh, Patrick checks in. Sills, why are D-line is ineffective at running twists and stunts? Did you get this already? Or yeah, no? I did this one. You did? Yep. Okay, so we got them all. And then did you okay, get this good. one from Kimberly earlier? Z and, Z and Sills. Sills. My past career used to work at the New York Stock Exchange for Goldman Sachs. That's why I see vividly the financial side of the NFL. Holy cow. Hey, you want to hear something, Kimbo? I don't say this much, but I got my Series 7 with Bear Stearns. And I worked for Ace Greenberg on Wall Street, who was Trump's old guy. And I got my Series 7 through Bear Stearns instead of going over to Merrill Lynch. Here's my pitch, Kim. Hey, Bear Stearns, we've only had three stocks a year. That's what we do. We're not like Merrill Lynch. I tell you this flat out. We're, we've never had a losing quarter in the last 68 years at Bear Stearns, and there's a reason for it. So. I like it. Let me drop out of here. You got Marcus coming up, man. Great stuff. Big sales. Looking forward to your interview. So wait a minute here. You, you agree, before I get Marcus Hayes on, because I yep. want him to hear here, um, you agree that the Philadelphia Eagles believe that they can win Super Bowls through the front office, GM, and owner, whereas the places that do win the Super Bowls, they win them through coaching and players. Uh, that's certainly that, was Doug, that was Doug's issue because if you look around the successful teams over the last 20 years, take a look at uh, Philip. I mean, take a look at uh, New England. You won with coaching. A talent evaluation with yeah. Scott Pioli and with Nick Casario. And now look at what Veach is doing with Andy Reid and also with Steve Spagnola. Coaching players win you Super Bowls. No doubt. Now and look, it's certainly from the managers. outside. Look at Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom works with John Harbaugh. The coach doesn't work for the GM. Yeah, no doubt. And that's what it looks like from the outside. When you look at Chiefs, like you mentioned, um, and, you know, obviously the Patriots dynasty, that was obviously – uh, Bill Belichick there. And then you fired Doug, you know, three years removed from our Super Bowl. It's obvious what the Eagles value. And I think you bring, bring up a good point there. I appreciate it, Xander. Thank you very much. Make sure Talk you get to Sills. Thank you, brother. At Birds 365, we appreciate it. By the way, Eric Allen was spectacular. I want to get our get next guest uh, his opinion on Eric Allen and what he said. And I want to bring up something that's kind of important. Eric kind of threw a shot at Paul Domowitz. And the process itself. We get Jason Cole on. We get uh, Jared Bell on. We get all the Hall of Fame voters who are our dear friends. And I want to get 
our next friend. But I got to tell you, I love listening to him when he's in the pit talking about um, the Eagles when they go to him. 